Greetings to all our learners. Welcome to CEC Lectures. Dear learners, the topic that we will be focusing on is Levels of Analysis in International Relations. Now, this lecture is very significant for the learners from the discipline of political science, global business, international relations and other learners who are keen to analyze further things on research methodology because this topic tries to give us insight as to, as to how one proceeds with the basic assumptions, main units of analysis in international relations. In this lecture, we will try to understand the issues of international relations, what draws various theories, research models towards analysis and what are the main unit for research. Similarly, as we understand these aspects, we will be also discussing on the changes that are there in the various levels of analysis. Now, we all know that international relations is always seen from the perspective of state. State has a correlation to the system and system is correlated to the individual. So, this triad will also be analyzed from using the various theoretical crunches to have a better analysis of what are the levels on which terms of reference on which the aspects of research are drawn in it's the study of international relations. At the very outset, as we all know that the word levels of analysis has an important bearing on research methodology as well. So, dear learners, levels of analysis, you know, as we begin with the lecture, we must decode its meaning we must decode as to where and what it signify. Levels of analysis is used in the social sciences to point to the location, size, scale of a research target. Level of analysis, now this is very distinct and different from the term unit of observation. Let us understand how the former refers to a more or less integrated set of relationships while the latter refers to the distinct unit from which data has been or will be gathered. Now, this is very essential that when we try to understand this idea of levels of analysis in international political relations, this has a bearing with political science also. Because in political science, levels of generalizations, abstractions are essential as we take any research forward. Similarly, for various theoretical perspectives in international relations, levels of analysis, what has been the level of the generalization? What is the focus of their analysis? Primarily, you know, getting the debate towards levels of analysis is essential. Now, why it is essential? Because this helps us to understand the highly complex and contested nature of world politics. Complex from the point of view of problems. Contested from the way issues and problems are perceived by various players in global politics. So, what we see here is it is the individual, state or society or international system. These three form very important three levels of analysis, individual, state, international system. Levels of analysis, you know an important debate, it is very essential to invoke the debates in the theoretical a paradigm of the discipline and when we see that how two levels of analysis were perceived by Singer. We take reference to some of the inputs drawn by Singer that two levels of analysis in international relations. Let us go decode them. 
at the unit level which is favored by Singer whereas the structure of the system that was favored by Kenneth Waltz. David Singer says that there are two levels of analysis here in the international system and the national subsystems. According to Singer and we present some quotes from his work, international system is the most comprehensive level of analysis that encompasses interactions of the system alongside component parts of the system. Now this is essential because this international relation what Singer's perspective is talking us that it not only encompasses a view wherein states exist but also interaction of the system alongside component parts of the system. The international level of analysis helps in understanding patterns of interaction and also help us make generalization and therefore predictions. The systemic level of analysis creates the opportunity and avenue to study international relations in totality. The strengthening characteristics what we again draw from Singer's work and we are quoting from Singer's per work from his perspective that the strengthening characteristics of systemic orientation is its ability of prediction. So therefore, when we take the debate on levels of analysis, in this regard what Singer puts forward, the behaviors of actors in the systemic approach can be predicted generally in terms of pressure structure of system force and once again we are taking reference to the you know inputs presented to us by David Singer in his work on analysis of levels where in which we can understand global politics and international relations. At the national level internal and external factors of behavior are distinguished and therefore the effects are different from the system level. Though systemic level provides a much comprehensive picture, Singer argues and we present quote his perspective that subsystemic or actor oriented system is more fruitful because of the diversity, the richer details that are there in the sub-systemic or action oriented system. Now we all know that when we are talking about international relations, when we are talking about world politics, one perspective that is common to all that is power. It is often said that power is the most important concept in world politics. So dear learners, we will now undertake an exercise trying to understand that how this aspect of power has been analyzed with reference to the levels of analysis namely individual, international state system or the international system. How is power perceived by various research approaches, by various theoretical perspectives in international relations theory. The idealism looks at the levels of analysis from the vantage point of individual moral principles. It when because it is trying to focus on cooperative perspective on what ought to be bringing in the focus on the norms, the values, democratic governments. We saw how the work of idealists like Immanuel Kant, Woodrow Wilson, it tries to bring towards the positive, the cooperative side of global politics but drawing on from the individual goodness. So therefore, the paradigm of international relations from idealist perspective has been analyzed from individual moral principles. Dear learners, let us take another theoretical perspective, realist. 
Of course, realists are trying to understand power, but what is the level of analysis? The state. How the policies, the stand of the state in international relations translates into national interest of the state. The states are assumed here in this understanding of statism, self-help, survival to be power seeking entity. So therefore, the same ambit of power, but it, the level of analysis, it is the state. Anarchy, an important concept that is there in the realist perspective, uh, the idea that goes around that there is no one to look after the state's interest in the international domain. At the domestic level, of course, the state will look after its own interest through its laws, through enforcement of laws and various other judicial mechanisms. But in global politics, there is no one to safeguard that. So when we go by the work of Thucydides, Niccolo Machiavelli, Thomas Hobbes, Martin Wright, Henry Kissinger, E. H. Carr, Hans Morgan Thau, George Kennan, all of it somewhere are pointing towards the idea that it is the state that has to secure, it is the ruler that has to secure the interest because there is absence of any regulating mechanism. So therefore, again what we see is how the power syndrome has been perceived at the level of the status perspective. The new realist perspective that has been presented in the work of Kenneth Waltz and how Kenneth Waltz tries to translate the idea of principles of political realism into a much more scientific, rational perspective of theory of international politics and that also happens to be the name of Kenneth Waltz's book. Here the level of analysis is the international system. So what you see? There is a transition. The idealist were focusing on the individualistic perspective. The realist towards the status discourse. The new realist, the level of analysis for the same issue of power is the international system. Herein the idea is that the structure of the system is defined by the logic of anarchy, the logic of absence of any regulating mechanism, the binary of hierarchy at domestic, anarchy at the international and therefore states place within that system the you know the perspective that Waltz also presents distribution capabilities. So what you see here is how this perspective focus on uh, the idea of international relations being studied from the levels of analysis of the system has been criticized also. And we take an important criticism dear learners that is the Copenhagen school and how in that criticism when we look at the work of Bozin and Weawa, how they put forward an alternative understanding of levels of analysis. So let us take the criticism according to Copenhagen school system level which has been you know perceived by the neo realist works has certain weaknesses. It overestimates the importance of global polarity. They are saying that there is too much focus on the idea that we are living in the world of domestic versus international. There is too much focus on the idea of hierarchy versus anarchy. Then it emphasizes too much on military security and that, that of the state that how just reliance on military wars somewhere gives a one sided perspective of global politics. Somewhere it overlooks the social constructions of regions the issues of security that comes forward and this criticism has been presented by the Copenhagen school of neo realism. Now in this you know when we read through the work of Bozin and Vyava they also introduce regional level of security as a prominent tool for studying 
international politics and especially this has a bearing on the context that is since the end of the cold war further let us take further some perspective put forward by this uh, school that the idea that sole superpower or great powers are not willing to intervene in security affairs outside their own regions because their domestic capabilities are not enough to engage military and undertake strategic competition in critical parts of the world. Further, this perspective also tells us that somewhere you know it leaves us on a no alternative zone and also to leave local powers to deal with military and strategic issues within their own regions. So, therefore, what we see here is that how in this exercise wherein while the levels of analysis are changing, but the central focus in the research perspective that is looking at global politics, looking at international relations, the dynamics that are involved to secure national interest and power that remains same. Other important idea is that of neo idealism wherein the level of analysis is the international system. Herein it is argued that peace may be established in international politics through democratic principles. Another similar perspective what we saw in the neoliberals. Uh, neo idealists when we see the work of William Cohen, Medlin Albright, Hegel, there are some of the neo idealists whose work definitely tell us therein wherein there is a focus on the bigger system and how the ethos of democrat, democracy and global politics may usher in peace. Similarly, dear learners as we look at levels of analysis, the Marxist perspective gives an altogether different perspective. Now, when we study Marxism, now important add point to be added here that in global politics, the ideas of Marx were interpreted. Marx never wrote for global politics, he focused on capitalism, capitalism as a means wherein the base superstructure dichotomy was leading to exploitation and domination. This idea of Marxism and analysis of capitalism was used in international relations theory at the level of analysis that is class. Herein power struggle in international relations was seen through class. That is the idea that state was an instrument for imposing the will of the rich. The dichotomy of uh, rich versus poor wherein the Hegelian idealism was inverted by Marx in the form of historical materialism, wherein history was perceived through the matter namely divided into haves versus haves not. And herein in every phase it was the rich versus poor that was the defining norm. This idea was used in international relations trying to look at how capitalism, how the state are an instrument or a perspective of the power struggle and this view of, of Marxism tried to get a different level of analysis that is the class namely from the vantage point of the state and the world system. The Marxism Leninism gives the levels of analysis that is of finance capitalism looking at imperialism. So, what we look at when we look at Emmanuel Wallerstein's work, Rosa Luxemburg, uh, Dos Santos, all of it you know talking about dependency tries to bring the focus on the structural perspective, but the level of analysis primarily is through the process how capitalism, how capitalist exploitation leads to a scenario where there is power struggle at the international relations. Now, as we take the learning forward 
on the levels of analysis, we have some important references and our learners, our students must use, um, uh, try to draw further on those inputs because these references will be a guiding point for you all to aid in your research, to develop research questions and above all for a much more clear understanding of international relations. The work of Barry Buzan on the levels of analysis problems in international relations reconsidered. This is very important because this tells us that how throughout the history the focus between individual, state and system has been changing and how international relations through its various approaches and theories tries to take you know each theory takes a different level of analysis and therefore the outcome the theory that present that theory presents is also different. Another important work Barry Buzan and Olive Yawar saying regions and power the structure of international security. Now this is important from the point of view of looking at how because security is very important for international relations concerns from Morgenthau to Walls, they have talked about it. And this focus that how security in the study of security, one of the levels of analysis could be at the regional uh, level too, at the level of understanding this entire debate between superpowers and other powers. So that is an important way perspective which one must factor in. Then uh, an important work by Morton Kaplan, a very classical work. The that is a system and process in international politics. This also tells us that how to understand the dynamics of international relations, how the theoretical perspectives keep changing and how the processes also are comprehended and understood in a manner of the different prisms. And an important work, J.D. Singer, we refer to J.D. Singer's work that is levels of analysis problems in international relations. So dear learners, this work is essential because it tells us that levels of analysis has to be comprehended in a manner to understand the not only the research problematic, but also to have a clearer understanding of the challenges and the changing nature of global politics. Levels of analysis is an important perspective and an important work in the realm of political science and in international relations too. It guides us what should be the location, the size, the scale of research target and this explains that how different approaches in global politics they present to us a distinct perspective. When we look at levels of analysis, it is essential that world politics needs to be studied today in a much more broad perspective, in a much more holistic, comprehensive manner. Because the problems of world politics are much more complex, world politics further is much more contested. Today, states exist with non-state actors. Power is much more than military power. Hard power has to complement soft power and further national interest is multidimensional with focus on ecology, health, economy, science and technology, development in communications amongst others. So three important levels individual, state or international system. Every perspective focuses on one of these factors and it is essential to engage in a comparative contrasting exercise of debate wherein we put the main theories and try to see that how the idealist tries to bring the focus towards the individual, how the realist tries to present a rational theory based on the state centric level of analysis or how say other theories try to bring the focus on the international system. Similarly for security, for example the traditional understanding of security is status concerning the state but revised understanding of security is focused from the human perspective namely in the idea of human 
security. So, dear learners, in this lecture on levels of analysis, it is also essential to be to, for us to realize that how there have been debates, the debate between Singer and Waltz, debates presented by the Copenhagen School, the works of Morton Kaplan amongst others. And this is very essential for us in the sense that to formulate a much more comprehensive idea of research of problem areas in global politics and also for better comprehension of issues, concepts, ideas of global politics, one has to situate the levels of analysis and try to bring the focus on how, what is the location, the size, the scale of the research target. So, dear learners, we hope that the lecture on levels of analysis international relations presented some important insights to you all. Do revise the references presented to you. We look forward to some positive encouraging feedback also from you all. Thank you for being with us.